Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. The live will start shortly. I'm just gonna wait a few minutes until we get to six o'clock so more people can join in. Hey guys, so since there's so many of you in here right now, we'll start the live early and then I'll go back to um, the video of the dogs being blow dried. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to dry your dog at home and the tools that you need to dry your dog at home and why it's important to dry your dog at home. If anybody can't hear me, please let me know. I just wanna make sure the microphone is working properly um, and then we will dive into it. So you can see below um, in the carousel, I have highlighted the Canine 2. Um, so there's going to be a bunch of dryers down here that I'm going to talk to you about and why they're great. So depending on the type of dog you have, if you have a small dog or if you have a large dog, it's going to be dependent on the dryer that you want. And I do want to keep in mind that these dryers are really, really expensive, but they're expensive for a reason. So I wouldn't suggest that you buy these dryers um, just for no reason. I'm only suggesting that you purchase them if you have a really heavy coated dog that sheds a lot. As you can see from the video I just showed you, so let's go back to the video. You can see that a lot of hair is coming out of this dog and that's entirely because of the dryer. For the first, I'm gonna say, three or four years of me running my business, I did not want to invest in one of these dryers because they are so expensive. And that was a huge mistake on my part because I took a lot of time trying to dry dogs and I spent a lot of time brushing them afterwards because I couldn't get this coat out. So when I could finally afford to buy the canine, it made all the difference in the world in drying their coat and de-shedding them. A lot of people always ask me um, the best way to de-shed their dog. And although there are great tools on the market, um, brushes and rakes and stuff like that, the dryer is really your best friend in de-shedding your dog. And the better dryer you have, obviously the more hair is going to come out. So you have to be careful when you're purchasing dryers online because some of them might be high velocity but they're not nearly this strong. The canine is, in my opinion, the ultimate dryer. You cannot get a better dryer. And if you're a pet owner at home, um, this is the only dryer you're ever going to need for all of your pet's lives. This dryer will last forever. It needs very little maintenance. And I am a professional groomer. I am grooming anywhere from um, 10 to 15 dogs a day. And I've had this dryer now for, I'm going to say eight years and I have not had to replace it. So it is really a one-time purchase. I know it's expensive, but again, it's worth it. So I'm going to show you my canine. 
So I have I have both the K9 II and the K9 III. Um, they're both great. The K9 II gets a little bit more warm and the heat is good when you're trying to dry a double coated dog. You really want that heat. So I prefer the K9 II to be honest. Now this dryer is extremely heavy. So if you're gonna see me trying to lift it and why it's taking so long, it's because it's really, really heavy. Okay, okay. And it is also full of dog hair because we just finished work today. So this is the K9 II. This is how big it is. It comes with a filter on the back that is full of dog hair and dander as usual. That has to be cleaned. So the filter just comes right off and this needs to be cleaned on a regular basis every single day to make sure that it's not sucking in hair and dander. Um, and the inside of it has brushes. And I'm trying to remember the brushes are in the back. So this here, you can unscrew it. This comes right off and then you'll see the brushes on the inside. You can look up replacement brushes. Um, if you are a pet owner, you're probably never gonna have to replace those brushes. So you don't have to worry about it. If you're a groomer, you're gonna have to replace those brushes at least once a year. So keep that in mind. Um, so the canines are down here. The canine two, or sorry, the canine three, I'm going to highlight now. The canine three is great if you have a big dog and a small dog because it has two motors and you can turn them on separately. So if you have a small dog that you wanna dry, you would only turn one motor on. And then if you have the big one, you would pop both motors on. So that's convenient also for groomers because you don't need to have two separate dryers. The reason why I own, I own like four dryers is because sometimes there's more than one of us drying a dog. So it's nice to have the same quality dryer that we can use on the other dogs as well. But if you are a pet owner, you only need one of these dryers. So again, if you have a small dog and a large dog, I would recommend getting the K9 III because you can shut one motor off and make it less strong for your smaller dog. And I do use the canine on pretty much every single dog I groom unless they're super small. Let's see what's playing now. Let's see if we can get to Ace. If it all, okay, yeah. So this is a small dog. Um, I am using the canine two on this dog. And then obviously we have Ace. So obviously with Ace, um, this little guy here, I'm not going to be using the canine two or the canine three, otherwise I'm going to send him flying, but I could use the canine three using just one motor and that would be fine. But for him specifically, for the smaller dogs, I tend to use an entirely different dryer, which I have highlighted below. It's the Shalandi dryer. So that's what I'm using on Ace in this video right here. And the reason why I like this one, it's, well, first of all, it's cheap. It's only $85. It will last, let's get back here. It will last a really long time. It's great for professional groomers. It's also great for pet owners at home. So if you have a smaller dog and you're looking for a small, less expensive dryer, this is great. Keep in mind, if your dog has a thicker coat, this will take a lot longer to dry them. If you have a stronger dryer like the canine, it'll take a lot less time. So for example, if you have like a cockapoo or you have um, any really poodle mix, they're gonna have a more dense coat. But I do believe I have another dryer down here for dense coats. Trying to find it. Yeah, the Sher Sherbeo, the Sherbeo dryer. Yes, um, it's good for cats too. I wouldn't use the canine unless you're using the canine too and only using one motor. Or you can use the Shalandi or you can use the Sherbeo. I think that's how you say it. Um, those are a little bit less strong and those are great for cats as well. I forgot to add in a cat in that video, um, but we do use the Shalandi on all of the cats. So now we're gonna get into the happy hoodie and why the happy hoodie is necessary. So we'll go back to that video and you're gonna see that every single dog in this video is wearing a happy hoodie. The happy hoodie is great for a lot of things. It's not just good for blow drying, but that's generally what a groomer would use it for. So the Happy Hoodie is basically used um, for grooming to reduce the noise of the dryer, but not specifically the noise, it's really more the air. So when the dogs feel the air from the blow dryer going on their ears, they tend to panic and that makes us doing our job a lot more difficult. So I find if I use the Happy Hoodie, 
the dogs that normally panic from the air won't panic. So that's the reason why I use them when I'm working, but they can also be used as like an anti-anxiety um, hood. So for example, July 4th is coming up. A lot of dogs panic from the noise of the fireworks. So this helps to reduce anxiety. Of course, it's not going to work for every single dog. Just keep that in mind. But a lot of my clients that do use it for dogs that have anxiety over fireworks or thunderstorms or car rides, they tend to find that it makes a huge difference in their pets. So it is a great tool to use. It's similar to the Thunder Shirt. I'm not sure if you guys know what the Thunder Shirt is, but basically it's just a really tight fitting type of sweater that you put on animals and it makes them feel like they're being hugged and it helps them for anxiety. So the Happy Hoodie does the similar thing. And that's, I have it here. I have it here in the two pack. So that's great if you have a big dog and a small dog and you want one for each. They do sell in a two pack. So they're all highlighted below. The two pack is highlighted below. Um, and I will pull them out here. They are individually packed. They're really easy to clean. You can just wash them, uh, pop them in the washing machine. There's a lot of, um, of these on Amazon that are knockoffs, but they don't work as good as these. They don't have the elasticity and the elasticity is what you want because that's what's going to hug around the dog's head. You really want it to be snug. A lot of people buy these and then they say, hey, I think this is too small for my dog, but it's supposed to fit them snug. So unless the animal is choking, obviously it's too tight, but it's not supposed to be loose because that defeats the purpose. No problem. What about dogs that have anxiety when you bathe? So you can use this for anything that causes anxiety. So there are dogs that if you go to my YouTube channel, um, you will see, or cats, I put this on them when I'm bathing them too. So if I notice a dog or a cat is really stressed out, I'll try this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you have noticed, if you watch my videos on YouTube, you will see the difference in the animals that it makes. And this was introduced to me not too long ago, I'm gonna say about three or four years ago, when I just started using these and it made a huge difference in grooming. Like some of the animals that were impossible to dry now became possible to dry. So I'm, I'm just really impressed with the product. That's why I, uh, I actually sell these and I'm advertising them on Amazon. Everything that I talk about here is stuff that I use on a regular basis. I'm not being paid to promote any of these products. So just so you guys know that in advance. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send them in. So I also have below the stuff for dogs, which we've talked about before. And the stuff for dogs is right next to the Chris Christensen Ice on Ice. It's next to the Davis Quick Dry Spray, the Bio Groom Quick Dry Spray, um, the Easy Groom Ultra Fast, Ultra Fast, I'm assuming that says Blast, but I can't see it, and Nature Specialty Quick Dry Spray. So all of these down here are going to help you to blow dry your dog um, faster. So basically it's like a leave-in conditioner. Um, it makes them feel super shiny and soft. And for whatever the reason, I can't give you the science behind it, but I know that when I spray the animals down with this first, I usually brush it through their coat afterwards and they dry that much faster. But in addition to that, you should also be using a conditioner. So at the end of the carousel here, I have the Seuss dog conditioner. Um, I think that's for cats as well. Yes, it's for cats, cats too. And I would use that as well um, because you want to condition them first in the bath and then spray them down with the quick dry spray after. And this here, so I'll highlight the stuff for dogs. So this here is the concentrate, but what I have highlighted below is already ready to use. It's already diluted properly. So if you get the concentrate, you have to dilute it yourself. Um, so it's a little bit more convenient to have the product that's already diluted for you and then you don't have to worry about it. You have a four month Maltese. How do I prep her for her first groom? So whenever I get a puppy and I usually start at eight weeks when I get the puppy, the first thing I do is I bathe my dog at home because, well, I know I'm a groomer, but let's say I wasn't a groomer. Um, you need to introduce them to the bath right away, especially because when you pick them up, they usually stink. That's the reality of it. They're coming from a litter of puppies. Um, so I usually bathe them right away and I blow dry them right away. So obviously when you have a little puppy, you're not gonna go at them with the high velocity dryer to start. You should start with just a small, um, regular handheld dryer that you would use at home 
and they don't have to be fully dry. You just want to get them used to the process of being dry because that's something they're going to have to deal with for the rest of their life. Especially if you have a Maltese because Maltese tend to be a little bit spicy. Um, they have a strong will and they are willing to fight and stick up for themselves. So they tend to give groomers um, at the beginning of their lives a little bit more difficulty. So you would really greatly be helping your groomer out if you started doing this at home and get your puppy used to it. So bathe your dog at home, get them used to the water, give them lots of treats, give them lots of praise. On Amazon, you can actually buy, I wish I had it in the carousel right now, but you can actually buy those lick mats that you can put right in the bathtub, you can smear it with peanut butter, and that way they'll be distracted licking the peanut butter off the wall while you're grooming them. It's a little bit more convenient than actually putting peanut butter on your wall. She is a sassy pants, I assume, because Maltese tend to be that way. Um, I have one that's half Maltese, so I'm allowed to say that because he is very sassy. Um, so yeah, I would suggest doing that and then introducing them to the dryer. I would definitely purchase a happy hoodie to start, get them used to wearing it, um, use it uh, use it while you're blow drying. And then if you're not getting him fully dry at home, just make sure that you are brushing to ensure that he doesn't get matted and keeping him in a place where he's staying warm. It's summertime now, so I'm sure that's fine. You don't want your wet dog to be sitting in a cool area as a puppy because puppies have a hard time regulating their own body temperature. So they should be kept um, warm until they're dry. Um, you, when you go to your groomer, my suggestion would be to ask them if they use happy hoodies because a lot of groomers don't. They don't know what they are or they don't believe that they actually work. And if they don't use a happy hoodie, I would suggest bringing your own in and say, can you please use this on their head while you're, while you're blow drying my dog? That way he is less anxious. And it also will give the groomer an opportunity to use one if they've never used one before, and maybe they would like to um, get one. Now, another thing about these happy hoodies, when you're putting them on your dog's head, and it's on your dog's head for the entire blow dry, they are very absorbent. So what's going to happen is it's actually sucking all the water out from your dog's head, from your dog's ears, underneath its chin, and that's the place that they absolutely hate being blow dried, right? So it's just convenient because when you take this off, this area around their head and ears and everything is already pretty dry and now you have to do less drying, which is less stressful for them. There's just so many benefits to using this thing I can't even explain, but I love it. A lot of people say like, oh, you know, just cut a hole in a sock and use that. It's just, it's not the same. The material is fantastic. It's definitely not the same as that. So that's what I would do and uh, play with your puppy's paws. Play with their paws, play with their nails. Just get them situated to being touched, brush them. Uh, another very important thing is they have hair under their chin and we hold that hair while we trim the hair on their face. So that keeps them still. And a lot of times when you're holding that on a puppy, they'll panic and they'll start pulling away and they don't wanna be held there because they've never been held there before. So doing that at home and you know not letting your dog win. So if your dog tries to pull away from you, say no, keep holding on. And then once he calms down, give him a treat and say good boy or give him praise and say good boy. And that way he knows, okay, this is just a part of life to be held in that position. If you do these things before bringing your dog to the groomer, you're going to make your groomer's life so much easier and you're going to make your dog's life so much easier because now it won't be your groomer's job to train your dog, which is awesome because that's what a lot of people think is, you know, we're the ones that are supposed to make the animal good for grooming. And the reality is, is it starts from home. It starts with the owner working with their puppy from day one. So I would suggest that. And also if your dog is four months old, they should already have been to a groomer. Four month old is the age of which they should be to a groomer. So if you are waiting any longer than that, you are delaying their progress. So I would suggest booking something. What is the best way to cut dark nails on a dog when you can't see the quick? So I do have um, some videos on YouTube. I also have the very first video that I did on Amazon Live talks about the nails, talks about how to cut them, talks about the products to use when cutting them. So if you go back to that live, you'll get a lot more information. Um, but basically when you're cutting the nail, you're cutting it a little bit at a time until you see a black dot. So there will be a tiny little black dot and that black dot is their quick and you don't wanna go back any further than that. So go back to my 
old video on Amazon. I think it's the very first one I did. It's brush and nail care. Um, that one's going to give you a lot more information. Can you give some general tips on how to wash a dog's face, especially around the eyes? So maybe I should add that into another live. I do have a shampoo that's a video that had been posted, but I don't remember if I showed how to wash the face. Um, again, if you go on YouTube, I have a lot of videos on there as well. But basically when you're washing a dog's face and eyes, you're gonna use a tearless shampoo. You're going to, I always start at the very top of the head. I do the top of the head, I do the ears, and then I'll do the beard here and just put the tearless shampoo on there. And then at the very end, I will put it in between their eyes here because that's always a really gunky place. Um, always leave that to the end and then rinse the face as quickly as possible. Even though it's tearless shampoo, you don't want it sitting on their face for too long. Um, but you don't have to be concerned about water getting down their ears or water getting in their eyes. Most dogs are smart enough to actually stop breathing when you're washing their face so that it doesn't go up their nose. Um, unless you own a Shih Tzu, then rest in peace because they tend to take deep breaths when you're washing their face every single time. Um, but yes, uh, that's the easiest way to wash their face. You don't want to get water down their ears, but if you do, your dog will be fine. Just clean out the ear after with a cotton pad. It's a myth that you can't get water down the ears. It'll cause serious problems. Dogs go swimming every single day. They get water in their ears all the time. You take your dog for a walk, it gets water in their ears if it's raining. Like it's, it's not the end of the world. I have huge knots under my mini schnauzer's chin. I bought a detangler tool. Any recommendations on these knots? She's nine months old. Um, I would shave it. Don't even bother trying to brush it out. Schnauzers can be temperamental for grooming and if they're getting a bad experience of having those mats brushed out, it's not going to be good for you or the groomer or him or her, sorry, her. Um, so if I were you, I would bring your dog to a groomer and just get that to be shaved out and start over. If it's just under the beard, your dog will still have a mustache. It can still look cute. It will grow back in, it's just hair. You can detangle it if you really, really want to. I would try using, um, go back to my old video on Amazon where I talk about brushes and nail care. I will be talk about um, different types of dematters that are available on Amazon that you can purchase. But like you said, she hates when I get the brush out. Don't do it. I wouldn't put your dog through it. Just shave them, start over fresh. She'll appreciate it. She doesn't care what she looks like, I promise. Any more questions? I think we pretty much went through everything on the carousel, except for the brushes. Okay. Oh, and the absorber. Okay, so after the bath, there is a nifty tool you can buy that is much better than a towel, and it's called the absorber. Is it on here somewhere? I don't think it says it on here. So the absorber is highlighted below right now. Um, there's different colors. There's yellow, there's teal whatever you want. So this is similar to a ShamWow, but this is way better than a ShamWow. So it's wet right now and you use it when it's wet. So it actually comes in the package already wet for you. So if you take this and you grab your dog's hair, so you're not, you're not going like this with it. You're grabbing your dog's hair and you're squeezing and you can pull a little bit as you squeeze, but obviously not to hurt your dog. Um, this will take so much water out of your dog's hair. I always suggest using a towel first, do your normal towel drying, and then go over your dog with this. There will be a lot less dry time if you're using an absorber after you towel dry. If you don't, um, it's just gonna be more time under the dryer. So it just depends on what you wanna do. It depends on the temperament of your dog. If your dog doesn't care about the dryer, then maybe you can skip this part, but I absolutely love the absorbers. I use them every single day, best tool. We just got a 10 week old golden doodle. Any grooming tips? We usually take him to PetSmart. So I'm not gonna say anything like, you shouldn't take him to PetSmart. Like I'm sure that's fine. They have great groomers there. That great groomers start out in PetSmart. Um, 10 week old golden doodle and you've already taken him. So that's great that you've already taken him to PetSmart. Sounds like you're doing everything right. You have a young puppy. You've already taken him to the groomer. Um, if you're looking for actual grooming tips, my best advice would be to check out my YouTube channel because I just have so many videos um, talking all about uh, grooming that would be much better than this specific live. If you go back in this video a little bit, 
Um, I just spoke to somebody about their puppy and tips and tricks they can do at home to make grooming easier. Um, but unless you have any specific questions really about blow drying, if, you, if you're just tuning in, make sure you go back because I did talk about different dryers and stuff like that. Um, and then from the absorber, we have the all system slicker brush. And it's right here. Okay. So the reason why I'm showing just the all systems and I'm not showing the other brushes that I usually use on my channel is because this is being used for brushing and blow drying. So if you don't want to buy a high velocity dryer, it's too expensive or you don't want to use it for whatever your reasonings are, um, you can use a regular handheld dryer and you will just back brush and blow dry at the same time. So just make sure that you are doing it at the same time. And this is called fluff drying and it will actually help to dry it quicker because you're brushing and drying at the same time. Very similar to when we dry our own hair, we tend to brush it, you know, brush it and hold the dryer on it. I am now brushing my hair with a dog brush, that's great. Um, but yeah, I would suggest if you don't wanna buy a high velocity dryer and you have a curly coated dog, brush and dry. Just be careful when you're brushing and drying because remember that this is sharp it is going on their skin so you don't want to be digging you want to just lightly lightly fluff dry any digging will cause what's called brush burn and that can actually get infected and be a whole issue for your dog so just be gentle when you're brushing my female german shepherd sheds and sheds how do i get it under control i do all the grooming myself okay um so we're gonna go back to this video and here we go so do you see all the hair that's coming out of Elo? He is a Finnish Lappand. Um, this is because of the high velocity dryer. So I'm gonna highlight that specific high velocity dryer below that I am using. It is the K9 II. So, and I'm using, you see the nozzle that I'm using? It is the pointy nozzle, not the flat nozzle. So the pointy nozzle is gonna get all the hair out. So I have a German Shepherd myself. She sheds like crazy and I groom her once a week, or sorry, not once a week, once a month. I blow dry her with this dryer. I do brush her after as well, but the dryer does the best job at removing all of her undercoat. And if you have a German Shepherd, she'll probably sing to you the whole time as well. So that's always fun. But yes, I would suggest getting a high velocity dryer where you can get all of that hair out, all of the undercoat out. Um, there's other brushes and tools. And if you go back to my very first live on Amazon, I talked about brushes and nail care. And that one specifically talks about great de-shedding tools for dogs like German Shepherds. Um, but for me, the high velocity dryer is always number one. And that's the reason why when you take your dog to a groomer, they come out looking so fantastic. It's because of the dryer. Any other questions? I think I went through the entire carousel, so I don't think I'm gonna stay live for much longer, but I will stay on if you guys do have more questions for me. Look at my little ace, isn't he so cute? <laughs> he hates the dryer, by the way, guys. He usually goes ballistic when I'm blow drying him, but it makes a huge difference when he is wearing that happy hoodie. So I'm spraying this one down right now with quick dry spray before I blow dry her. I did brush that through her coat using a slicker brush as well or a pin brush is fine, but it just really helps to fluff up the coat, make them super soft and dry a lot quicker. And that's, okay, let's go back to that. So this is where I am fluff drying the dog. So I stopped with the blow dryer and I moved to the brush and now I am fluff drying. So that's how you hold the dryer and fluff dry. It makes them super puffy and soft, but it also dries them a lot quicker. The best recommendation for the widest de-shedding brush for a rag doll. To be completely honest with you, um, I do not have a recommendation for a de-shedding tool for a fluffy cat. Um, I, I don't, I only ever use the high velocity dryer on them to remove undercoat. And then I will use the Equi Groomer brush 
but the Equigrima brush doesn't necessarily always work on long haired cats. It works better on short or medium haired cats. Um, for a rag doll, for example, I would only ever use a comb. I've heard that you can use an undercoat rake on cats, but I've always been very afraid to try that because undercoat rakes are very sharp and cats have very thin skin. So I've never actually de-shed a cat with an undercoat rake. So again, my suggestion to you would be the high velocity dryer. I would use a slicker brush, I would use leave-in conditioner, and then I would go through the cat with a comb. You bought the de-shedding brush that I recommended. Um, what de-shedding brush did you buy for a cat? Do you know the brand? I don't normally recommend de-shedding brushes for cats other than short-haired or medium-haired cats. Yes, the dryer is very loud. That's why they're wearing the happy hoodie around their heads um, to try to muffle the noise a little bit. It's for ear protection and safety. That's the conditioning spray. Any more questions? before I log off because I really want to eat dinner. <laughs> what size happy hoodie for a corgi? I would get a large. The small is going to be too small. The extra large will be too big. So a large would be great for your corgi. Dogs have different heads. Like I use, um, I use an extra large happy hoodie on a pug because his head is just so big. And since they have the smushed in face, I find that they don't like it to be too tight, so I tend to use the extra large, so it really depends on the dog. Should I get a small one and a large one since you'll probably grow out of it? Um, what breed of dog did you have again? Golden Doodle. Um, you can probably just get the large, and I'll show you here, because there's no sense of you buying both. But here's the large. So you can just fold it like this. And now it's smaller. So it's not as large. It's not going to go over his eyes. So that's what I would do while he's a puppy. And then when he's an adult, you can just unfold it. And that way you only have to buy one instead of buying two. No, I do not recommend the Furminator in any way. I absolutely hate the Furminator. Um, the only time I use the Furminator is if I have a dog that has a wire coat and they're meant to be hand stripped. So hand stripping is where you pull the hair out of the coat. So it's funny that I use a Furminator to pull the hair out of the coat. It's not de-shedding. So the Furminator tends to cause a lot of damage to coats. Animals don't like it. Um, it really breaks their hair. The Equi Groomer is a much better de-shedding tool than the Furminator. Before I go, um, my question to you guys would be, what do you want me to talk about on um, my next live? I don't know when the date of it's going to be, but I will mention it on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, but I've already talked about brushes and nail care. I've talked about food and treats and supplements. Um, I've talked about blow dryers and I've talked about clippers and blades. So all of those lives you can find on my channel on Amazon. So is there anything that you guys are really looking to know about pets specifically, um, toys or bedding or anything like that, that you would like recommendations on? And then I can figure out what I'm going to talk about next week. Um, if it is a large breed puppy, I will use the high velocity dryer at the first appointment. If it is a small breed puppy, I would introduce the high velocity dryer at the second appointment. So the first appointment should be no later than 14 weeks, right? No, yeah, 14 to 16 weeks. Um, 
and then their second appointment I would use the high velocity dryer but if it is a large breed puppy they are getting the high velocity dryer at the first appointment because they need to get used to it because it will take a very long time even to blow dry a large breed puppy. So again, if you guys have any idea what I should talk about next week, I'm kind of getting a little bit stumped on certain things that I should talk about. There's only so many grooming tools I can talk about, but I am sure there are other pet related things that you guys want to know or what you should purchase or anything like that. Okay, um, I haven't gotten any response to that, so I am going to end the stream. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will be live again next week at some point. Um, I might talk about different food bowls, like there's actually food bowls that are super toxic for your pets. So I will talk about maybe food next week and different toys that I found on Amazon, different bedding that I found on Amazon that I really like, um, and how to groom without the tools. I mean, I don't know that I could groom without the tools, so I don't think I'm going to be able to give you that information because I don't know. I only learned how to groom with the tools. Okay, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you all next